Hey guys, let us start it again. And uh, we now we have a presentation uh, from Eduardo Schutz from Exur Brazil. And he's going to talk to us about fish stats, hack its website analysis. Okay, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to present fish stats, hack it website analysis. My name is Eduardo Schultz. I work together with Fabricio at Axur Brazil. Fish stats is uh, a research I developed in Unicinos, which is a university in Brazil. And I'm an information security student. I'm graduating this year. But it has everything to do with incident response and with uh, Axur's, Axur work as well. But my, uh, the professor who worked, uh, helped me uh, during the research is Eduardo Heck Farias. And here's the quick agenda. So I want to tell why I did this, this research, present the tool itself, so how was the development, related work, the results, uh, conclusion, and what are the next steps. During the instant response job, I noticed that a lot of Hackett websites sh uh, shared the same applications. They had the same, they used the same uh, programming languages or they were in the same ISPs. And so that's a lot of things in common. And it, it came to my attention that uh, it's very, very, very clear, uh, this, this, this information. So fish stats, it's about uh, which tools how often does it happen? So how often the web websites are being hacked? If Does it change through time? And perception versus reality. I couldn't find any tool uh, available on the internet that could show me this kind of information. I wanted information regarding only the hacked, hacked websites. And what are they running? What kind of applications? And uh, as I couldn't find, I decided to create a tool myself. Okay, uh, this is some information from our friends from CertBR. Uh, last year, there was an increase of 54% on incident report attacks to web servers compared to 2013, on a total of 28,000 incidents. And the attackers exploit vulnerabilities on, this, on the websites, and once they succeed, they use the same website to host uh, fake web pages or phishing, or even to ins uh, insert the, their own scripts and attack other websites. Another information is that uh, CertPR continued to observe during 2014 that a lot of incidents were trying to brute force the administrator uh, profile on these applications. And it, the uh, very common applications are uh, content management systems, known, known as C CMS. And the most popular ones, I think, are WordPress and Joomla. OK, just to make sure uh, what the, the research is about, we have the internet, and we have sites inside the internet. And inside the fraud, we had websites created for fraud and websites that were actually hacked. So the research is only the, the, the colored part. Okay, so what, did, what it does? It does an analysis on servers and websites that are, were hacked and hosted some kind of fraud, phishing specifically. And the source is the fish tank database and open fish database, which they are very, uh, very, very big and very uh, well known. And how how do I do that? I noticed that when uh, a website created for for free for phishing uh, was active, the, the phishing try, tries to to look like a brand, tries to look like a legitimate website. And when you hack into a website, you can't change the domain of the website. You're going to put the phishing inside subfolders. 
in that website. So the host never has the brand name. This is the this is the base to 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 the work. So I I, I built a list with regular expressions of famous brands, brands that are always uh, every day they are being attacked uh, by phishing. And if the if the the regular expression doesn't match the, this list, then I assume this is a hacked website. It's been running since uh, last year, so it's been uh, more, more than a year without interruptions. And it's hosted, uh, uh, you can access it on fishstats.net. Uh, a warning for the Firefox users, the homepage has a map, and this map consumes a lot of RAM so I would, uh, I would uh, say to you that uh, try, try accessing with uh, Google Chrome. Okay, so the tool has four stages. Uh, the, the script runs every hour. And the first stage, I read the fish tank and open fish database and I compare the new hacked websites that I, st I didn't had before. So there's about 20, 30 websites hacked every hour. Assuming, all, all the calculations are assuming that the time the, the phishings are inserted into fish tank and open fish database are right after the, the phishing attack was released, because the, this database, they, they change a lot. They are very, very fast, very dynamic. Uh, so when I, I, I get a, a, hacked, a hacked website, I assume it's a hacked website, I will try to get some information on freegoip.net. I use a API and RIPE, so get some information about the hosting. On the third stage, I will use WatWeb. WatWeb is a tool from Morningstar Security, and it does an analysis on the website. It's not an invasive analysis. It will look from it will look the HTTP headers and the source code, and we'll get uh, we'll try to get as much information as it can. And on the fourth stage. All the information that uh, I gather with this tool is shown in a real-time dashboard that I built with Redash. Redash is a tool from uh, Arik, a guy from Israel, is available on GitHub, is very good. Uh, you can connect a lot of types of database and create graphs in real time. Uh, there's no coding needed. You just need to know what, to, what information you need and you create those graphs. Those charts, they are, they are very good. Uh, related work. Uh, the, uh, the works that, the research uh, so far that I've looked, they try to, to, say, to say if it's uh, phishing or not. But they are not looking at the, ho the homepage of the hacked websites. They are trying to say, this is a phishing or not, either by looking to the source code or to the URL but they are not looking at the root, at the homepage of the hacked websites. So this is what I do. Now the results. Here we have a map of the hacked websites. The, there's a, a little time lapse down there. It's on the homepage and uh, it will show the, the location of hacked servers, uh, the hacked website, and where is the server. And it will go through time. It's ordered by a uh, number of detections. So the first detections appear first, and the last appear less. Here we have the number of hacked detections by month. So uh, September now, we have about 8,000 websites hacked by this month, and the average by hour is around 13 hacked websites every hour. I also have information uh, 
uh, summarized, also overall Hackett websites, and by hour. And uh, some time ago, uh, I was reading a report about uh, from WebSense, and they, they, their number of Hackett websites in the year in the last year or was 100 thousand websites hacked and my my tool also showed uh, 110,000 so it's it's really close to to what websense found and i think it's kind of accurate but of course this is the, the first version so it it needs some improvement Here we have the hacked websites in the last hour. So I did this last night. So at 10 p.m. we had around seven hacked websites, and around 12 o'clock we had 30 hacked websites. This was the peak on this graph, on this chart. Here we, I have a heat map. So. It, this is based on f fish tank and open fish, as I said. And we, we can see that the, the most common hour uh, where the, the attackers prefer to, to attack is on Wednesday at 8 p.m. This is uh, Brazilian time, so we could make some, some, some study and try to, to look on what, from where are these attacks coming and maybe change the the, the, the hour, the, uh, the oh, sorry, this is the only, the, the only thing on the website that is not updated hourly because uh, it has, uh, it, 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 right now it can't be done, but I'm talking to the developer and soon we will get uh, it updated hourly. Here we have the uh, uh, hacked websites in the last days. So we can see that 21 September, we had over 600 websites hacked and the average by hour was 26, around that. And here we have the top 10 days. Uh, by looking at this list, Maybe we can get some information uh, regarding the, the top days, right? So, okay, uh, uh, on August 12, there were 1,480 Hagrid websites. So maybe if you look at your own network, you will see that there's a connection between these dates and maybe the things you are monitoring in your own network. Here we have the top ISPs. So the top 15, all the 15 are from in the United States. And we have the column called more info. Uh, there's, there's a column where there are links from outside the tool where you can see the data regarding the ISP. So these are websites that are useful to check the information, the same information that you're you are seeing here, but outside the, the, the tool, and you can maybe correlate with uh, the, the, the data you have on your own network. Here we have the top 10 cities. This is also a, a list. On the website, you can select which country do you want to see so I did a selection last night and uh, with uh, countries from South America and Caribbean. So this is the result. Was, we have Santiago in Chile with 916 uh, hacker websites hosted there. This is also updated hourly and you can select which countries do you want. Here we have the top 15 CM CMS. So as many of you may know, uh, WordPress and Joomla are, every day they are being hacked. And here we, uh, the WhatWeb tool 
can get what version the website is running. So here we have each version and the, the amount of detections. We also have the top operating systems. So Unix is the highest. The, the fish stats, it's, it's not about, I'm not saying Unix is vulnerable. I'm just saying that websites being hacked to host phishing, most of them are running Unix. This is just a fact. It, it, the, the, the tool will give you clues about what's going on on hacked websites and then you can correlate with something of your, your own data or maybe a new release of an exploit and you can get, get to, a, to a final result. Top 10 web servers. We have on the, the top is Apache because it's uh, the most popular, I think. But it can be due to a vulnerability. I'm, I'm not testing that, I'm just showing the information that I'm collecting. But we do have on the third line, OpenSSL on the version 1.0.1e. This version is vulnerable to the heart bleed. So there are still websites that haven't patched it, patched it yet and they are being hacked, probably by this. So the conclusion is that there's not a standard of hacked websites used for phishing, but when we look at the information collected, the similarities found are very interesting. When I first started this research, I thought that the, the most part of the, the websites were Joomla and WordPress. And in fact, they are not. There are a lot, a tons of things happening on hacked websites and that there's not a standard at all. But by looking at uh, CMS, looking at ISPs, looking at operating systems, web servers, then we can have uh, this information and maybe we can correlate this information with our own data inside our own networks. The next steps. In fact, what web collect a lot of information. It, it runs about 2,000 tests for every website. So it collects the PHP version, if the website has login forms, if the website has comments that may be with the, may, may contain uh, a password. So it does a lot of things. And I, I, I could show uh, more, more data, but we have to stop and maybe think what data do I want to, to, to see. And this is the, the other topic. The Redash uh, tool was built for sharing. So I can open the website and you would create an account and you would have full access to the database and you could create your own charts and get uh, the, uh, update, the, uh, them updated hourly or every day as you wish. So that, that, that's one thing that I can do. Or we can create an account for, uh, maybe we can talk later if someone wants the access. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. I, there's a read-only user uh, in the statistics uh, on the upper side of the upper right of the homepage, the user is fish stats and the password is fish stats. So you, you can you can see the, the dashboard now. Uh, other thing would be to add new sources. So new sources of phishing, but it, it has to be phishing, right? Because I'm using the brand names to validate hacked, if this website is hacked or not. So it doesn't work for malware, for instance, because malware, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The malware does, it doesn't necessarily wants to be, needs to be a brand, but phishing needs to be a brand. So malware and phishing are different. And we have to, to, to look and maybe add a new source. 
Another thing that I'm testing, I'm reading some blacklists, about 20 blacklists, public black blacklists on the web. And when a, when a fish stats detects a new website hacked, I check on those lists, and then I create a score based on the in how many lists that IP or that website is present. So I, I'm testing that. I'm not showing yet on the website, but I'm, I have the script. It, it's running. And I'm also accepting suggestions to the next steps. Uh, maybe you had an idea or collaboration. It's basically that. Don't know if anyone has any questions? Questions? Hi, uh, Eduardo. Uh, I'm guessing why are you adding a, a threat score? I, I mean, uh, you are focusing on um, Hacked websites. Yes. So, uh, uh, what's what's the the main goal to to have a, a threat score? What's the use that you are uh, figuring out uh, that you could uh, or someone else could have uh, from this threat score? Okay. In fact, uh, I'm I'm reading. For instance, if the I'm checking if the IP is a Tor exit node or if is sending is known for sending a lot of spam so this this threat score is based on that it, it, unless, uh, this uh, imagine if the website is, is it was hacked is sending spam is a tor exit node it's more dangerous than a website that it's only a fake only a fake website of uh, uh, phishing more questions No more questions. So let's thank you, Eduardo, okay. for thank his you. presentation.